All right, so in this video, I'll just give a very quick overview of the risk analysis methods that we will be covering in this part of the course. Now, remember, this part of the course focuses essentially on these uh, analysis methods. Now, I've broken down the analysis methods for you guys into three types. So any method that you use to analyze any sort of risk can be classified into one of these methods. Now, we have our qualitative analysis approach and that's where we rely on non-numerical data to perform the analysis on the other end of the spectrum we have the quantitative analysis method and that is where we do rely on numerical um, data in order to produce a final figure uh, that helps us determine you know how severe the risk is but then we have other methods of analysis where it, we can't classify it as a qualitative approach and we cannot even classify it as a quantitative approach. So it lies somewhere in the middle, and that's because there's some sort of data that's being used. However, the data is not continuous in the sense that I'll give you an example. So a semi-qualitative analysis approach would rely on a scale, let's say from low to high, so low, medium, high. And then for low, you'd associate a value of 10, medium, 100, and then um, high, 1,000. So that you know that difference um, between the numbers it's not continuous uh, you can't have say 955 that doesn't make sense on the scale so the scale is only comprised of these three values but given that it's a scale that utilizes numbers it's still numerical so as you can see in a sense it's not fully numerical it's not fu fully um, quantitative based and it's not qualitatively based it's somewhere in the middle and that's what a semi-qualitative analysis is now if we look at the qualitative analysis methods what you'll notice about them is that mostly they use words and descriptive scales um, and they do that in order to describe the likelihood or the consequence of events taking place um, so when I say events, I mean, you know, uncertain events, events that lead to risk. They, there's an initial uh, screening activity that is undertaken in order to determine, you know, the kind, the kind of words or descriptions to associate with the uncertain events. Um, it's mostly used when numerical data is not present. So if you don't have numerical data to assess the situation, this is the uh, type of analysis that you would adopt. Um, and because we don't, we're not concerned about collecting data, it's cheaper compared to a quantitative analysis. Okay, moving on to um, the semi-qualitative approach. Well, the semi-qualitative approach is, as I said, you can't fully classify it as a qualitative and you can't classify it as a quantitative. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, and it's in the middle because it's like similar to the example that I gave you, there's there's numbers that are associated, but the numbers are not continuous. All right, so you can't have in the example that we had before, you can't have 900 uh, as a value that represents anything. It's either 10, 100, or a thousand, right, on that scale that we had before. So you do associate numbers with a scale, but the scale represents the qualitative analysis. So high, medium, and low, these are descriptive words. And then with these descriptive words, you associate um, you associate a, a figure or a value. Um, as I said, because the numbers are not continuous, the size of numbers here do not reflect the size of the risk. Um, and the numbers only reflect the order of the risk. So a thousand, if you associate a thousand with um, with a particular uh, risk or activity, you're saying that this is, um, you know, th this is, is sort of riskier than an activity that has a value of a hundred, right? So you're not saying that it's 10 times the risk, but you're just saying that it's riskier. Um, and in terms of order, the risk that that's associated with a thousand is going to be uh, more severe than a risk that's associated with a hundred how much severe it is we don't really know when we do that comparison between these two um but we just know that it's just more severe compared to a risk that has an associated value of 100 um if you do combine the numbers in a way you can get uh, an end value that gives some sort of an indication 
as to the risk priority that's involved. Um, and that's what's good about, you know, a semi-qualitative approach is that, you know, there's other analysis that you can perform beyond, you know, the words and descriptions that you associate with the risks. Now, finally, for our quantitative analysis methods, they fully rely on numerical data. Um, and they have, you know, an accurate representation of the likelihood and the consequence associated with the risk. The only problem associated with a quantitative analysis approach is that it's really hard to conduct. It requires a lot of data, uh, usually, um, and hence it's, it's more expensive compared to the other two approaches. Large organizations prefer quantitative analysis because a number gives you a clear indication. A final figure gives you a clear indication of the types of risk, the, 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 um, the hazard associated with the events and how severe the risk is. Now, in this course, there's several uh, analysis methods that I'll be covering. So when we look at the qualitative analysis approaches, um, some of the methods that we'll be looking at include a probability and impact matrix. And that's where, you know, you have the scales very low, low, very high associated with, you know, the probability and the impact. So we don't associate numbers, we associate descriptors. Uh, so descriptive words. Um, an example of a semi-qualitative analysis approach that we will we'll be covering in this course as well is AHP, so an analytic uh, hierarchy process. Um, and that's a process that allows you to rank your risks when you have, um, you know, several alternatives. And then the for the qualitative for the quantitative analysis method, um, I'll be going through decision tree analysis. Uh, fault trees and Monte Carlo simulation with you guys. So just very briefly before we end the video, a, an example of a risk management, um, the implementation of risk management. Um, you've got a project, right? A construction project. Um, what you need to do is you need to, and that's just one example of risk that's associated with the project is the uncertainty in the estimate durations for um, certain activities and that can impact the the end completion date of the project. So um, in order to propose these alter alternative dates, uh, you tend to associate an impact with each date and the impact is on, you know, how much it will cost you extra money um, if you were to uh, go beyond the uh, project completion date. Um, now, the way we could do that is you know, we could provide, you know, these alternative dates based on precise figures that we calculate. So different dates have, you know, different risks associated. Um, and then we can calculate the risks based on a quantitative approach. If we do have historical data available, if we don't have data, then we'd most likely adopt a qualitative analysis method. Um, and now with these different dates, um, you'll get different, you know, um, critical paths associated with these dates. Um, and that would then reflect on the overall, overall risk associated with the project. Again, um, this slide shows the references uh, that I've used. To, so do check them out, please. Thank you very much.